Hi, I'm Josh with Tactical Tech, and congratulations on your recent download of the Automated Inventory Management System, AIMS, the database that not only manages your stock and inventory of your equipment and assets, but also manages the Army paperwork that goes along with it. Before using this database for the first time, there are a couple things you should know, and by the end of this presentation, you will have been briefed on the equipment types, the categories, packages and boxes, document types, LPRs, and the different versions of this database that it is available in. In the Army and in this database, there are three different types of equipment. They are categorized by one of three letters known as ARC codes, N, D, and X. N is for non-expendable equipment. D is for durable equipment, and X is for expendable equipment. Non-expendable equipment is equipment that is generally seri has a serial number and is usually accountable to the PBO or the company commander. Some examples include, but are not limited to, computers, weapons, and radios. Durable items are those items which are not depleted or consumed by use and usually don't have a serial number associated with them. These items may be accountable to the PBO or the company commander. Some examples include hand tools such as screwdrivers or hand hammers, TA-50 such as rucksacks or K-pots, or furniture. Expendable items are items that are subject to being consumed by use. These items are not usually accountable by the PBO or the commander. Examples of these are paper, nuts or bolts or screws or nails, or cheap small items such as batteries, cables, or power cords. Some exceptions and notes on expendable items are, within this database, Hard drives are treated as expendables, but are tracked as non-expendables once they are issued. Some expendables in the Army are required BII for non-expendable equipment, such as an 18-volt battery for a DeWalt power drill. Expendables still need to be tracked and accounted for to properly prevent fraud, waste, and abuse. In addition to ARC codes, each type of equipment in this database is classified under a broad category of equipment, such as a cable, computer, or weapon. Further, each item is named with a very descriptive name, known as a Descript ID. The name starts with the category and continues with characteristics unique to that piece of equipment. For example, a VGA cable would be Cable, VGA, D15 female, D15 male, 6 foot. A laptop computer would be Comp Lap, Dell, D830. And an M4 rifle would be Weapon, Rifle, M4, 16 inch barrel, Rails. In this database, each Descript ID has an additional information associated with it. It includes relevant Army information, such as LIN, NSN, nomenclature, BII, ARC code, and SEC code. The restock and resupplier's information, which is manufacturer, store description, part number, catalog number, the last resource, price, source website, or contact information. And it also includes the equipment information, such as the weight, a picture of the equipment, and a description of what it is for or what it does. To make signing out, grouping, deploying, and equipment management easier on the user, this database can be used to organize equipment into what we call packages. Packages are groups of boxes that deploy together or generally get signed out together. These packages contain boxes that, of course, hold the equipment. The terms package and boxes are used generically. They can be used in different terms to suit the user's need, such as a package can be used to represent a platoon, and the box can be used to represent the equipment assigned to a squad within that platoon. 
Let's say that you are responsible for the trucks and equipment assigned to a task force. Within this task force, there are two different assault forces, each with their own NCOIC. In this scenario, you can treat each assault force as a package and each truck as a box. With this setup, you can hand receipt the equipment by package by signing it to the assault force NCOIC or sign out a truck's equipment by box to the soldier responsible for the truck. Next I will cover different types of hand receipts or 2062s. An NCOIC is usually signed for and ultimately responsible for all equipment within his shop from the company commander or PBO via unit level hand receipt. The NCO does not use every bit of this equipment himself, it is generally used by other sh soldiers within his shop. To maintain accountability, the NCOIC issues the equipment to them using a 2062. In this database, equipment assigned from the NCOIC to the soldier in this manner uses an internal hand receipt, or a 2062 with a document number that begins with INT. If a soldier from outside the shop needs to sign for equipment assigned to a soldier within the shop, he uses a sub hand receipt or 2062 with a document number that begins with sub. The soldier in the shop is still signed for the equipment via INTH hand receipt, but is able to concurrently sign out the equipment and maintain accountability using the sub hand receipt. A third type of hand receipt is the external hand receipt. This is a hand receipt used primarily for turning in equipment to get fixed, such as in a help desk environment. A soldier from outside the shop turns in his equipment to the shop. The equipment is entered in the database, and the database generates an external hand receipt, or 2062, with a document number beginning with EXT. The shop soldier prints it out, signs for it, and gives the soldier from outside the shop a signed copy. This database will remind you when a 2062 is set to expire, and by default, internal and sub-hand receipts have to be re-signed or cleared every six months. External hand receipts will stay on your main menu tracker till they are closed out. It is suggested that they don't stay open for longer than two weeks in a help desk environment. The database also maintains hard drives from point of issue till their destruction. Hard drives are issued using DA3964s, which are classified document accountability records. These document numbers will begin with HD. The documents need to be re-signed annually, and the database main menu will remind you when a document needs to be re-signed or turned in. There is quite a bit of paperwork when a classified hard drive is destroyed, and this database generates several forms for the destruction, all of which will share the same document number, starting with DST. It will mark your original DA3964 with the necessary destruction information. It will also generate a ASC Form 25-6 destruction certificate and a USOC Form 1138 hard drive disposition certificate. The database also makes turning in equipment a bit easier paperwork-wise. When turning in equipment to DRMO or SSA, a 2407 is required to verify the item's condition, along with a DD-1574, 1577-1, or 1577-2 serviceability tag denoting the condition. A DA-2765 is also used as a request for turn-in. All of these documents are assigned the same document number which begins with TID for turn-in document. 2765s also have sub-document numbers for each turn-in slip generated.
A database will also generate documents necessary for the lateral transfer of equipment although it is recommended that you use a 3161 generated from PBUs and only use the database version for tracking purposes and database management. These 3161s generated from the database are assigned a publication number beginning with XFR for transfer. Ames can generate LPRs or local purchase request and comes with a preset free suppliers database full of information necessary for placing orders on equipment. Tactical Tech Administrative does not endorse any of the products, manufacturers, or vendors listed in the database, nor is this database or Tactical Tech Administrative endorsed, support, sponsored, or associated in any way with companies involved. The information included is meant to give the user a good start when building an LPR. Always double check prices, availability, and ensure that the item listed is the one that you need to purchase. Always shop around for the best prices and service, and update the database if any changes need to be made. There are two different editions of this database, the first being a standalone edition and is meant to be used on, by a single user on a single computer. This is one file and some of the benefits of using it is it's easily transferred from one computer to another and it has a restricted use. The Enterprise Edition allows multiple users to update information in the database from multiple computers. It consists of a backend which contains the database tables and information itself and two different front ends one being the basic front end that allows other soldiers in the shop to update the on-hand quantities of their assigned manifest and sign out equipment on sub-hand receipts or sign in equipment using external hand receipts. The other front end is an advanced front end with master controls. This allows the user to do everything that the basic one can and much more such as change serial numbers, authorize quantities, sign out internal hand receipts, and pretty much manage everything within the database. If you choose the Enterprise Edition, please note that you will need to run it over a network and it cannot be used on a computer that is unable to reach the backend server. Thank you again for downloading the Ames database. We hope that this database will save you time and frustration. From Tactical Tech, this is Josh, hoping that you will have a nice day.